BBC South can reveal that at the height of the recent riots, Thames Valley Police came under pressure from community groups in Reading not to reveal examples of serious disorder. It was an attempt to prevent further copycat behaviour. Senior police met with community groups just hours before the town's macro cash and carry store was attacked late at night by up to 40 people. £15,000 of goods were looted. Yet the next morning, Thames Valley Police described it as a burglary at a shop where just four people were arrested. Nearly two weeks later, there have been no police appeals using CCTV to catch those involved. Ben Moore reports. As this was happening in London, people in Reading were worried. The fear there'd be copycat violence in the town was very real and Thames Valley Police were on high alert. Their fears were realised just after midnight on the 9th of August when up to 40 people broke into this macro store and poured in. They stole £15,000 worth of electrical goods. Police arrived quickly and within the hour, nine people had been arrested. But despite the scale of this incident, the public would not learn of it until some time afterwards. I think the police were under quite a bit of pressure, both from local organisations that were worried about pressure on public services if there were copycat events that were going to take place. So I think the police were extremely worried about giving it too much uh, publicity, over-hyping it. And I think really that was quite a sensible approach to, to the matter. The previous day there had been an unscheduled meeting between police and community leaders. It was interesting, I actually had to take the step of asking for the meeting myself. Um, and that's what gives me the impression that perhaps there was a, a deliberate policy of uh, playing things down. That night, as rioters in London used social media to organise violence, police in Reading also made use of Twitter. These are actually the overnight tweets. All they say really is that it's calm and that police are on the street. The first mention of any trouble is at 10 past seven in the morning in a press release when it says that four men have been arrested after a burglary at an unnamed shop. The, the initial tweet um, said four people were arrested. At that time, that was what happened. Shortly after that, during the course of the night, more people were arrested, and that information went out. It didn't, though, because it, did, it, it, just, it just says four people arrested, and, and, and that's the morning after. And then the next update we get is a day or two later saying that 11 are going to appear in court. At the time those four were arrested, we did not know the full extent of the problem. Um, so we, obviously th there is some hindsight involved in this. We put out what we knew and as we arrested more people we put that information out. Certainly there was no intention whatsoever to um, su suppress or alter the story in any way. We were delighted with the response. 11 people have now been charged with burglary and violent disorder. In court it was revealed Macro had staff in the store during the looting. Local youth workers based in Reading say the police did the right thing in restricting information. I think if young people had seen you with your cameras there, it would have actually inflamed the situation. There's a certain type of young person, it's like a badge of honour to be seen to be doing bad things. A lot of people, a lot of the kids, a sort of they would all jump on the bandwagon. It's a thing where if everyone else is doing it, then they would get involved also. We put the comments of the local MP and community groups to Thames Valley Police. They say they didn't want to comment any further. Macro said it was a matter for the authorities. The fuller picture of what happened that night may emerge when cases come before the courts again. Ben Moore, BBC South Today, Reading.